Hi, I'm Shane. And I'm Miranda, or Chicky. Welcome to our big adventure through Western Canada. We're continuing this episode with a ferry crossing and a drive along the most stunning coastal highway, stopping via epic waterfalls on our way to Whistler. There, we catch up with friends and get a ride to the top of the world, hiking through massive snow walls and spotting bears on our return via a tri-cable gondola lift. Get our thrills on the longest zipline in North America and meet potentially the fastest zipliner in the world. We hike along the turbulent river, discovering the wreckage of an old train disaster before a round of disc golf and the most charming rural brewery at our next location. The following day we hike to the most stunning glacial fed turquoise lakes with incredible views and wildlife. BC for Alberta via the highest mountain in the Canadian Rockies on our way to Jasper. There we meet up with friends and camp among wandering elk. Exploring Jasper National Park, we head to a picturesque lake and the township of Jasper. After we embark on the most epic day hike in the National Park for incredible views, followed by a well-earned soak in nearby hot springs. say a farewell to friends, we make one last stop at a breathtaking glacier and valley walk. Join us for this adventure and many more to come on Global Travel Stories. Continuing from our last episode, we bought a ferry from Vancouver Island to the mainland. Here we were entertained by the same country folk band we saw at Little Ronnie's Barbecue in Tofino. the coast mountain range from the ferry were absolutely stunning. Bay in Vancouver and we are currently on the Sea to Sky Highway um, on our way up to Whistler visiting Squamish and a few lakes and waterfalls on the way so it should be fun. The Sea to Sky Highway or Highway 99 is a famous scenic route connecting coastal Vancouver to Penbiton in the mountains just north of Whistler. This was my third time traversing this highway and the only time I had seen it clearly with such fantastic weather. Shannon Falls here in Squamish and the parking situation is absolutely ridiculous. We had to circle the parking lot about five times. It is a beautiful summer's day, but I came here back in 2014 and I'm pretty sure there was like no one else here. So it's be kind of interesting to see what it looks like, but it is an impressive waterfall and Miranda's never been here. So she's excited. Let's do it. So Chicky, the verdict? It's a pretty good waterfall, I'd say it was worth it. <laughs> Such an optimist. Below a rock wall known as the Chief, we take advantage of certain BC legalities in the town of Squamish. Are 
you get there, Miranda? Edibles. Here you go. Cookies and gummies. Cookies and gummies. THC edibles. Good times ahead, eh? This is pretty cool. That's cool. So we're here in Alice Lake in Alice Lake Provincial Park, just outside of Squamish. It's a pretty hot day today. I think it got to about 25 degrees Celsius. So on our way to Whistler, we thought we might stop off and have a little bit of a dip. Refreshing. So we're heading down now to Brandywine Falls, which is actually another place that I've been. Uh, I was here 2014, so same trip where I went to Shannon Falls in the summer of 2014. And we're just outside of Whistler, which will be my third time in Whistler, 2013, 2014. And now, cool. And we're gonna stay with our friend Kenny tonight. So just reading a little bit about uh, Brandywine Falls and apparently the rock formations are made from a lava flow that finished up about 13,000 years ago and that's what the waterfall cascades off. So we're heading to Whistler now. Alrighty, so we've made it here to Whistler and I'm wearing my Canadian tuxedo for the evening. Dressing fancy tonight. We're with Kenny. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Welcome to Whistler. <laughs> so uh, Kenny used to live with us in uh, Queenstown and he's going to show us around. He's going to be our guide for this evening. Uh, we're just approaching the village stroll now. <laughs> Shops, bars, restaurants. Come and check it out. Cool, let's do it. Unfortunately, we only had one night to catch up with Kenny as he was leaving for Vancouver the following day for work. We are grateful to him for allowing us to stay at his home and enjoying some of our treats from Squamish with us. Alrighty, so we're starting off the day in Whistler on the gondola. Whistler is the largest ski resort in North America by area. However, it's also a mecca for mountain bike riding as well. So you'll see a lot of these mountain bike trails, which I'll show off in the background there, that sort of showcase the mecca that it is for mountain biking around the world. Marina's gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing today. Today we are heading up the gondola and we're going to try and go to another gondola that takes us up to the peak and see the snowballs if we have time. And we're also doing the peak to peak gondola, so quite a few gondolas up here, but hoping to get the best views possible yeah. <laughs> before going ziplining later on today. Cool. Yeah. So we're heading to the top of the world summit right now on the top of Whistler Mountain. I actually haven't been to the top of the world summit because last time I was here in the summer, 2014, I did a lot of cycling. So the downhill mountain biking starts from the peak gondolas. From the top of the world summit, we're gonna have some unprecedented views. And then if we do get time, I'm gonna do the snow walls. The reason why we're rushing is to get to the zip lining in time. right now. Look at these views.
So we did actually make it up to the snow walls, although they aren't quite as high as they were probably about a month ago. So early June, I think, is when they actually clear through this area here and they open up the chairlift to the top of the world. And that's when the snow walls are essentially at their highest. But they're still here and this is mid-July. So you still get a chance even if you do come here in July. But yeah, they're pretty much on their way out. It says that it's a 45 minute to a one hour walk down to the peak to peak. We're gonna try to do it in half an hour because we're in a hurry, so that's why we're rushing through this area right here. A little further down, the snow walls started to increase in size, which were actually quite impressive to walk beneath. Right now, Miranda. We're going across on the peak to peak gondola. So heading over to Blackcomb Mountain from Whistle Mountain and then heading straight down. We made it. <laughs> Whistler Blackcomb has a tri-cable gondola network, a gondola each to reach both Whistler and Blackcomb Mountain, and one to connect the two, known as the Peak to Peak. Miranda, where are we? We are at the Blackcomb gondola. We're about to get on the Blackcomb gondola. We're on Blackcomb now. We're about to get down back into Whistler Village because we're about to do what, Miranda? Go zip lining. With zip trek. So I worked for Zip Trek Eco Tours in Queenstown, and our main headquarters, where it all started, is right here in Whistler. So this is Zip Trek Eco Tours in Whistler, and I've been wanting to go on a tour called the Sasquatch, which has a two-kilometer long zip line that goes over the mountains, and it just looks stunning. So yeah, you get chased by a Sasquatch as you're going down it. <laughs> On our way back down, we saw our second black bear of the day grazing in the meadows beneath the gondola, a common sight to be seen in Whistler during the summer. How was that, Miranda? Do you rate that as one of the best gondolas you've ever been on? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that was absolutely stunning. Three gondolas in one day. There you go, three gondolas in one day, and also we did that walk that was supposed to be an hour, but uh, yeah, we took about 30, 35 Actually, minutes. four gondolas. I four lied. gondolas. Yes. Oh yeah, because we went up as well. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, four gondolas. Pretty cool experience, and now we're heading over to the zip lining, and we are right on time. Backwards torpedo, basically. So his back, <laughs> we're hitting it. So his limbs. Do you mind if I film you? <laughs> yeah, what do you want me to say? Oh, no, it's just what you're saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's cool. I'm listening. Yeah, no, it's no. just cool. So it's like a backwards torpedo. He was wearing a lot of clothing. Yeah. yeah. He weighed a little more technically. He did it three times in a day, trying to get the highest record. So I think his, he clocked in at like 203, 205, and then 207 on his third run. Kilometers per hour. Yeah. Just to clarify for the video. <laughs> yeah, backward, backwards torpedo. Um, and he's, he's local, so he went like three times. Wow. Jesus. It's a commitment. It's That's also not crazy. quite as fun. Local and loco. So yeah. two, uh, 207 kilometers per hour, the fastest record for zip lining in North America or in the world? Um, on this zip line? On this zip I line. I don't know if they're yeah. going faster in other places. 20, uh, and and 2.2 kilometers long, making it the longest in North America. Little did we realize we would be having beers with this local legend by the end of the day. But first up, time to set our own records with the zip lining race.
yeah, I don't, I didn't think she got it that it was a race. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you video that? Yeah, oh, the whole okay. thing. Yeah. Absolutely, had to. Okay, I'll get you to climb up a few steps here. Yep. Watch your shin. <laughs> oh, is that Miranda? <laughs> All right, I will give you this. So a lot of the uh, structures that you see around us here were built up for the Whistler Winter Olympics back in 2010. So it's pretty much why we have this really revitalized modern ski resort town. A lot of money went into Whistler for the Winter Olympics back in 2010. So it is a really idyllic little village. It's almost like walking through a theme park like Disneyland or something. It's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> All right, cool. We're going to meet up with some friends now for a couple of beers and maybe something to eat. But, uh, Rachel and Sasha here. Yeah. Yeah, hey. Welcome to Whistler. Uh, we're at Hunt Together, which is a great little restaurant here in Whistler. Highly recommend it. The food is amazing. So good. And we've also got Hazy as well. <laughs> She's running around. Come here. This is what's going to give us all the views. <laughs> She's so cute. Hazy is a purebred Australian shepherd who found a new best friend in me, or vice versa. So they were talking about the fastest zip liner on the Sasquatch. Who was it, Sasha? This, this guy right here. <laughs> this guy right here. What was it? 207 kilometers an hour. And what's your advice for a future zip liner? Never do it. Never do it. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Did you just run and jump? I'll show you. In a <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> 207. Okay, so you potentially may have the world record for the fastest zip line. Yeah, I mean, it's not official. It's but not official. From all the research I've done, the fastest considered is a zip line in Wales. Yeah. Where they went 186 kilometers an hour. And you were 207. Yeah. And you're going to talk to a Guinness? Uh, not personally. <laughs> we are going to. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else can for me. That's awesome. Alrighty, so we're doing a little bit of a walk this morning. We're heading along the Chickamus River and we're heading down to the Whistler train wreck, which is an old train wreck that occurred back in 1956. And that sound you can hear, the, the bear bells, because we are in bear country right now. And we've seen loads around. <laughs> yeah, we've so. already seen a few around here in Whistler. There are tons of black bears in the area. I've even heard that there are some grizzlies out in Pemberton where we're going tomorrow. Definitely need to be prepared for that. We've got the bells, we've got the spray. Hopefully it's just going to be a nice little scenic walk for the morning. And in the afternoon, where are we going, Miranda? We're going to play disc golf. Oh yeah, we're going to do that. And we're going to Pemberton afterwards. And we're we'll going to Pemberton. Yeah. <laughs> we're staying with Sasha and Rachel, who we met up with yesterday. And tomorrow we have a really exciting hike, so got some good plans coming up. Cheeky, we found some A-grade, high-quality bear poop right there. <laughs> the best way to tell the difference between a black bear scat and a grizzly bear scat is that the grizzly bear scat contains bells. Thanks for bearing with me through that one. cool that was Chickamus River Falls and we're almost at the train wreck which is pretty cool see the remainder of that wreckage. So 
So there were 12 cars that derailed and five of them were removed and used for scrap metal. Seven still remain. I'm gonna check out inside. This is cool. <laughs> so this is the dodgiest looking one hanging over the river. Let's go inside, check it out. Oh, that's crazy. Now we are at Miller Creek and we are about to head back to where we started. This is the end of our journey. It's really beautiful here actually. It's been a real worthwhile trip. We just thought we we're gonna go for a nice little walk and what we ended up doing was uh, exceeding our own expectations, which is cool. Did you have a good time, Chicky? Yeah, I did. It was a beautiful trail. <laughs> so we're with uh, Sasha and Sam and we're here doing a little bit of disc golf Woo! in Whistler. Woo! to Pemberton, finishing up the scenic Sea to Sky Highway and visiting the most charming brewery we have ever visited. So we are at Beer Farmers here in Pemberton, just having a couple of beers in the most beautiful rural setting. Absolutely amazing. After dinner and a few beers, we stayed nearby at Rachel, Sasha and Hazy's home. So the only thing better than a uh, homemade breakfast is a Canadian homemade breakfast. We've got waffles a la Sasha, and we've also got hand-picked strawberry jam, is that right? Yeah. Hand-picked strawberries from and locally. And maple syrup from Sasha's parents' house that nice. they do every year. And of course the iced coffee from Rachel there. <laughs> bon appetit, guys. Yeah. <laughs> After saying our farewells, we made our way to one of the most popular and most beautiful spots in the Pemberton region. Alrighty, so we are at the Joffrey Lakes Provincial Park, about to do the Joffrey Lakes hike, which goes up to three different lakes, about eight and a half kilometers and 500 meters of elevation. Home to the people of the Lillooet First Nation. We're gonna explore just some of this beautiful area and hopefully the weather clears up at some stage. Then we're going to Ken Loops, where we'll be camping for the night. And also stocking up on supplies as yes. well. Joffrey Lakes have become so popular in recent years that you now need to pre-reserve parking online so that numbers can be capped on the trail. So 
So that was the Upper Joffrey Lake. And the reason why these lakes have this beautiful turquoisey color is because of that big chunk of ice up there, which is the Matia Glacier. Pretty much grinds up the elements in the stones, causing this white sort of sediment that settles on the bottom of the lakes there, known as glacial flower, so the whitish gray sediment. So we're gonna head back down now. Rachel and Sasha had told us the drive east of Pemberton to Kamloops was stunning, and they were not lying. An absolutely beautiful road trip coming out of the Coast Mountains. The landscape became drier and began to open up as we headed inland into Kamloops where we stayed overnight, arriving just at dusk. We're driving to the Rockies today, Woo. Woo. crossing from BC into Alberta. We'll be heading to Jasper National Park which where we'll be heading to the campground which is Whistler's campground. We'll be meeting with our friends Raleigh and his girlfriend Alicia and yeah, camping there for two nights. We departed early for the Rockies, stopping for lunch by a beautiful lake and spotting our first moose of the trip along the way. Our first sign of the Rocky Mountains was Mount Robson. At 3,954 meters, it is the highest mountain in the Canadian Rockies. Robson, we crossed over to Alberta from British Columbia, arriving into Jasper National Park. Cool. Is the Beyond Burgers? Oh, is our done. chef here, Rolly? <laughs> oh, here, okay. All right, so here's the grimy side of camping. Yeah. This is, although this is a lot more luxurious than our usual setup, because usually this is our thing. <laughs> That's a good but point. This is a nice um, thing to have with running water. <laughs> so makes a difference. It needs more soap. <laughs> All right, I got my uh, tea towel, Judy. I got a flat today. <laughs> Not far from our campsite, we spotted some female elk and calves grazing in the field. Alright, so this big guy over here. What's up? This is Rolly Beckler. How's it going? Where did I meet you, Rolly? Iceland in what would it have been? 2014? 15. 2015? 2015. 2015 in Iceland. We have kept in very close contact ever since. Yeah. Except for the last four years with COVID. Well, it really picked up when you <laughs> broke your femur on my couch. <laughs> that actually happened. I, well, I didn't break it on his couch. I broke it skiing with him, but I stayed on his couch for like a week afterwards and the rest. Yeah. <laughs> and this is his fiance. Fiance. Uh, Alicia. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> cool. And we've also got some elk. Look at that, a mother and a fawn right in our campsite. This is Jasper National Park. Randa, it's going to eat you. <laughs> She's running. You're not going to introduce Charles? This is Sir Charles. Charlie. Hello. Charlie's just scoping out the elk. He's protecting us. Also known as Wapiti, I found this out that it's a, a local native word for 
white butt because apparently that's what it has. I don't know if that's true, but that's what the ranger told me. Later at camp, we were astounded by the tricks Alicia had taught Charlie. Yeah! Oh, yeah. oh God! <laughs> oh, what? Pop? Pop? Thank you. Other pop? Oh, thank you. What else do we know? Go middle? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Called, should I get a border collie or not? <laughs> it is morning. <laughs> um, so these are rose hips or wild roses and in the fall they'll turn into little red berries that you can eat they're really high in vitamin c so if you eat too many you will die um <laughs> but you can also eat the leaves so at this point you can eat the leaves you can also turn them into tea and that's really nice. good oh delish <laughs> is this one of the, these are one of the little rose hips here right uh no that's just a bud okay that's no. That's, that's not. It's too early in the season for rose hips. Which ones are better, the lighter ones or the dark ones? Um, they kind of all taste the same in my opinion, but. Ooh, <laughs> tastes like Turkish delight. <laughs> so we are here at Pyramid Lake, and as you can see behind me here, the Pyramid Mountain itself. We are in Jasper National Park, and we're going to spend the day exploring around the area. So we just had brunch here at Harvest in Jasper. It's fantastic food, highly recommend it. We've been really, really, you know, surprised and impressed by the food culture here in Canada. It's been really, really good. And now we're going to have another Canadian cuisine cultural staple, and it's called the beaver tail, which is a type of bread called bannock, but we'll talk more about that in a second. It's fantastic. So we've got our beaver tails. Everyone want to show off their fancy beaver tails? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've got our Canadian correspondent, Alicia, here, who's going to tell us the story of the beaver tail. Uh, beaver tails are bannock and then covered in some sort of sweet topping, traditionally with jam. Bannock is a deep fried dough that was from the First Nations people. So we grew up, if you grew up in Canada, specifically in BC, you learned how to make it in elementary school as part of our Indigenous learning. So it's pretty cool now that you can come and get it wherever you are. Excellent. Cool. Cheers. She's a natural. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the town of Jasper, we headed north to check out potentially the best day hike in the National Park.
So we're gonna do a little bit of a hike today. We're going up to the Sulphur Skyline, which is known as one of the best hikes in the Jasper region. It is a little bit of a distance and a little bit of elevation and Rawley has a, a knee injury. So we're gonna get up to the Shuey Pass and see how we go from there and potentially get to the very top. At least either way, we're gonna get some spectacular views. And then afterwards, we're gonna come down to the Miet Hot Springs to soak our muscles and then off to potentially a brewery. deep in the forest. The one thing I will point out though is be prepared for mosquitoes but now that we're starting to climb up past the tree line I think it's gonna get a little bit better with mosquitoes and views. <laughs> so we've cleared the tree line now and Pretty much left the mosquitoes behind us, although there are a whole bunch of flies and other sorts of bugs up here. But we're almost at the top, and already the views are spectacular, so I can't wait to see what's right up there. below we spotted some mountain goats in the midst of their summer shedding. Above we were greeted on the rocks by scurrying chipmunks eyeing us off for potential scraps left behind by our snacking. So we're at the top of the Sulphur Skyline hike, the Sulphur Skyline Trail. How do you feel, Miranda? Uh, like on top of the world or on top of Jasper. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. We are on top of the world right now. Uh, almost 700 meters in elevation. The views out up here are absolutely phenomenal. Outstanding. So we're going to wait at the top here for Rory and Alicia to catch up and just take in these amazing views. Yeah. Thing. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty excellent view. Yeah, a couple of steps for you, Rolly. Oh, like three in a mare. <laughs> what do you think, Alicia? Definitely worth dying for. Yeah. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Awesome. And what do you think, Charlie? Charlie loves the pickers. And he would like to be off leash. <laughs> to go after said <laughs> And we also saw, saw some mountain goats up there too, although they are shedding at the moment, so they're not at their prettiest. We're heading down now and heading to the hot springs and uh, potentially a brewery. Woo! That's even better. That's what I'm excited for, actually. Beer and hot tub. Yeah, beer and hot tub. Can we do both? Yeah. <laughs> so we're at the Miet Hot Pools, and after a long hike, it's time to soak our muscles. All right, let's go in. Oh, that is hot. It's like 40 degrees. After soaking in the hot pools, the best thing to do is try the ice cold plunge pool. How was it? Nice. <laughs> so we're acclimatizing to the cold pool right now for the medical benefits. Currently been in about three minutes. Unfortunately, the brewery was closed, but we were able to have a couple of beers back at camp after a big day hiking in the Rockies. Today we are heading out on the world famous Icefield Parkway, one of the most beautiful drives in the world. It goes from Jasper to Banff and we'll be seeing quite a few stops along the way but first things first we are heading on one last adventure with Raleigh and Alicia so we will be heading to Edith Cavill where we will do a one kilometer loop 
to see the Angel Glacier and then we'll say goodbye to them and head further on our journey making many stops along the way. So we're about to start the Edith Cavill Lake Walk. We're here with Rolly and Alicia and of course Charlie. You can never forget Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually coming up here because we were looking at things to do and I remembered coming up here back in 2014 as being one of my top experiences in the Canadian Rockies. It's just a small little walk that we're going to do around the lake, the Edith Cavill Lake, and get some views of the Angel Glacier. But there's actually a wilderness hostel nearby that I stayed at last time, which I could highly recommend. It's really cool. It's like a lodge in the woods and it gets you really close to this walk and also the Meadows Trail. So let's check it out. So up there you can see the Angel Glacier. The sides represent the wings and then the central part in the middle is the body of the glacier or the angel I should say. It's a pretty spectacular glacier. Unfortunately though, it is melting somewhat. When I was here back in 2014, it was much bigger than it currently is. And that tends to be the trend with glaciers worldwide, unfortunately. Due to the climate changing, they are melting at a rapid rate. So you really have to appreciate checking out these places while you can. It's such a spectacular sight. So you can see how the snow and ice clings to the different layers of the mountain itself. And those layers are actually comprised of different periods throughout time. These mountains once were below the ocean floor and over time have been pushed up due to tectonic movement. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Slightly impressive. Oh, Finally. Rolly was saying it looks more like a bird than an angel. It does now. <laughs> Maybe they should change the name to Bird Glacier. What do you think, the chicky? Yeah? way to say farewell to some great friends while appreciating the natural beauty of the Canadian Rockies. Join us on our next episode as we explore more glaciers and spectacular sights traveling along one of the most beautiful drives in the world, the Icefield Parkway, on our way to the town of Banff. We undertake some epic hikes in the Banff National Park, visiting the famous Lake Louise and Moraine Lake, as well as plenty of wildlife, including more bears, before returning west to Vancouver via Yoho National Park, catching up with more friends along the way. Join us on one of our most epic adventures yet with global travel stories. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel, become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks guys.